Hey, y'all seen Lace Copy Mustangs and Fast Forward? There's some hot little number with paint job that'll burn your eyeballs out like a welding torch. They turn normal little hay-fed pony cars into thick, corn-fed buff horses. <laughs> They also made some supercar that was also in that Morgan Freeman film, Bruce Almighty. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on Celine. Shouts to Raid for sponsoring this episode of Up to Speed. If you're into playing RPGs on your phone like me, you should definitely check out Raid Shadow Legends. It's the most immersive mobile game out there and it's totally free. What? How how is that even possible? Raid has all the features you'd expect from a new RPG. Sick 3D graphics, amazing storylines, player versus player battles, dragon boss fights, and literally hundreds of champions to collect and customize. I want my champion to have a YouTuber here. You can choose from all kinds of guys, like that guy, or that guy, there's that guy. Check out this guy. If you download now, you'll get 50,000 silver and an automatic entry into Raid's special launch tournament. You know I'll be in there smashing gooblins, so go ahead and hit that link below. Steve Celine was born in 1949 in Inglewood, California. Like so many big names in the aftermarket and race car tuning, little Stevie's interest in cars can be traced back to when his father bought a 1956 Porsche 356 coupe. Well. Steve's dad gave him that 356 when he graduated high school. When he wasn't in business classes at USC, he went to local Porsche club events and tinkered with his 356. That was all great and good, but like every 20 year old car guy, Steve wanted to upgrade to something with, let me guess, more power. While he was saving up for a Porsche 911, he discovered that Ford made a much more affordable and just as capable machine. In 1969, he replaced the old Porsche with a used Shelby GT350. After a few years, several mods and some SCC events, Steve drove the Shelby in his first road race at Riverside International Raceway and freaking won. Most people just want to finish their first race. This guy wins it? Sick. This guy rules. In the late 70s, Celine lived out all your hot boy fantasies and was a pro race driver in the Formula Atlantic series. In 1982, he jumped over to the SCCA Trans Am series, the sickest race series ever. The next year, he was introduced to some Ford executives who'd heard about his history with Shelby. They wanted to see what the boy could do with a Fox body Mustang. And by the end of the year, Steve founded Celine Autosport and got to work. Their first production car, the Celine Autosport Mustang, debuted in 1985. Just like Alois Roof did with the Porsche 911, Celine made extensive modifications to factory fresh box bodies direct from Ford. That earned them a shiny manufacturer's title, making them more than just another tuner shop. The Saline Autosport Mustang had new aerodynamics. Bill Stein suspension, wide 16 inch Nkai wheels, and upgraded sporty interiors, and the same 210 horsepower V8 from the Mustang GT. You could order one direct from your local Ford dealership, and it came with a factory warranty. What? Right. What? Celine kept racing throughout the 1980s, nabbing an impressive 30 podium finishes inside of four years. The race team swept first through third places in back-to-back -back grueling 24-hour endurance races at Mosport Sport in 87 and 88. That hadn't happened since the four GT40s swept Le Mans in the 60s. I don't know if you get any better than that. Steve was making a major name for himself, building fast and reliable Mustangs for both the street and the track. And he was just getting started. Enter the 1989 Ford Mustang Celine Supercar. The trusty 5.0 got enlarged ports, a larger throttle body, a new intake plenum, new rocker arms, stainless steel tubular headers, Walker Dynomax mufflers, and a heavy duty cooling system. This netted a total of 292 hertz pairs, quite a bump considering a stock Mustang LX was putting out around 220. <laughs> the 
SSC also sported a Borg Warner five speed four wheel disc brakes and adjustable dampers in the 80s. What the hell was this? A Porsche 959? I know, right? What the heck was this? A Porsche 959? Actually, the 959 had rear seats for your extremely short friends, but the Celine supercar tossed the Stang's rear bench and bumped a huge 10 speaker system instead. I just want to take a second and acknowledge how sick that is. Normally you remove the rear seats because you want to put a cage or harnesses back there, but this dude removed it for 10 speakers. <laughs> fight me, fight me, fight me, fight me. Celine debuted the car on April 17th, 1989 to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Mustang's original launch. Ford didn't do anything for the event. They didn't even get the Mustang flowers, but for 36 and a half thousand dollars, it was a pretty pricey pony car and Celine ultimately only sold 161 of them. Production slowed even more coming into the 90s, but just before the old Fox body Mustang was set to get parked in the retirement pasture, Steve retooled his tried and true standard upgrades. The 1992 Celine Mustang sported 17 inch alloy wheels wrapped in wide sticky tires. They needed the traction because a Vortec supercharger pushed the 5.0's power up to 450 buff horse purrs. That was insane for a V8 in the early 90s. And this boy had expensive taste. 45,000 bones worth. Despite a rocky start to the decade, Celine was ready to shake things up for the new SN95 generation Mustang. In 1994, Celine debuted the S351 and SR. The interior had some badass upgrades, like a 200 mile per hour Speedo. On the outside, they had body kits, an aggressive stance, sick! color matched wheels and came in some period correct neon colors. And uh, this is the 90s, a carbon fiber roof. They actually swapped out the modern overhead cam V8 that came in the new Mustang for an old reliable standby. The 351 Windsor that came in the SVT Lightning and had been around for literally tens of years. <laughs> Celine modified the bigger engine to make 371 naturally aspirated buff horsies. The SR model had essentially the same engine. You want to know what the biggest difference was? More power? You got dang right more power! More power, baby! 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 A big ass blower was strapped to the SR. This thing stomped out 480 sweet, sweet herspers. <laughs> The whole package pushed Ford performance above the competition, including the Corvette. One year after the SR's debut, Steve formed Celine Allen RRR Speed Lab race team with his pal, comedian slash actor, Tim Allen. That's right, the lovable ex-felon, Detroit daddy, uh oh, uh oh, uh himself. You can't drive a stick, can you? They added more safety equipment and other necessary race car stuff to a Celine SR and jumped into SCCA World Challenge Racing. They won the last race of the 1995 season, uh, same year Post Malone was born, and carried that success into 96. In 97, Tim and Steve returned the Mustang to the 24 hours of Le Mans for the first time in 30 years. <laughs> Gotta get mufflers for this thing. Over the next few years, Celine carried on their formula of turning factory Mustangs into fast, awesome handling machines. There was the S281 and the SA20 Speedster. They made a lot of horsepower, but you're probably not here for them. You're waiting for the non-Mustang. Celine wanted to build something that would punch above its weight class, something that would destroy Corvettes and Vipers and even give Ferraris and McLarens a run for their money. They had the expertise in making insanely capable track cars street legal. So, the boys do this! 
The 2001 Celine S7 is one of the most underappreciated supercars ever. Now, Steve knew a lot about modding Mustangs and V8s, but he needed Ray Malak Limited to help with overall development and design of a mid-engine supercar. RML was just a legendary race car development company. No big deal. The Celine S7 was America's answer to the McLaren F1. Its long carbon fiber body was as slick as Nolan's shaved body and a cockpit that looked like a freaking Le Mans prototype. They the engines in the first generation were big, seven liter Ford Windsor V8s cranking out 550 hertzpers. All of that power sent the S7 from zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds, and at 160, it created its own weight in downforce. Owners of the road-going version were fitted into them from the factory like an F1 driver because the seats weren't adjustable. They also came equipped with a rear view camera, so. That's nice. That was fancy for the year 2000, but you needed it because you couldn't see much past the S7's huge booty. All this could be had for a cool $388,500. That's like $1.5 million today. The revised S7 twin turbo was very much the same as the first, except with revised bodywork, updated interior, and... More power, baby! I love you, dude! 750 hertzpers and 700 pound-feet of turks. And it only gained like 100 pounds. This thing was still below 3K. Two big old turbochargers bolted to a 7-liter V8 now slap drivers in the face. Another version, the race version of the S7, the naturally aspirated S7R proved to be super competent on the track. When pitted against Maseratis, Lamborghinis, and Ferraris at Amola in 2004, the Celines wiped the f floor with them. Legend has it that to this day, Ferrari still looks back on this as one of their greatest upsets in their entire history, and I love that. After the success of the S7 supercar, there was hardly anything Celine couldn't do, which is why Ford asked them to help build their new GT in 2004. Ford needed to outsource some work to be able to produce a 200 mile per hour supercar. So Celine used their expertise in niche manufacturing techniques to do both assembly and paint. <laughs> Celine was a factory supplier for other cool cars in the 2000s too. They did a supercharged engine in the Harley Davidson edition Ford F-150 and were the paint supplier for the fourth gen Dodge Vipers. In 2007, they branched out even more and launched the S331 Celine sport truck. The hotted up F-150 had 23 inch wheels and the supercharged version made 450 hertzpers. But that same year, Steve Celine split from the company that he founded and started up SMS Supercars. Finally, he turned to boosting the power of other American cars. He put out a blower for the first year Dodge Challenger that would make it crank out 700 hertzpers. He did a modified Chevy Camaro with 650 hertzpers and called it the Camaro 620. You know, cuz. <laughs> The dust settled in 2012 and Steve stepped back from his old company, bringing all his other SMS stuff along. Of course, they still made Celine Mustangs, like a 2014 model called the SA30 to celebrate the 30th anniversary. There were more special editions, but geez, there's way too much to cover. Today, Celine has the 700 Hertzpur, S302 and 700 Hertzpur sport truck. Even better, they're also building a carbon fiber, not totally insane follow up to the S7. The $100,000 Celine One is powered by a, and I, I absolutely love this, a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine cranking out 450 horsepower and 350 pound feet. The S1 engine is mid-mountain and the car claws to 60 in just 3.5 seconds and it's only offered with a six-speed manual. And in true American fashion, he wants to make a GT4 race car that's cheaper than his European competitors. The Cup Series they've developed will have a category 
for young drivers. With the class champion getting a free seat in a Celine GT4 car for the following season, which is my favorite thing. Because right now, race car drivers are just rich kids. Where's the LeBron James? Where's the Mike Tyson of racing? Is this it? Maybe. Sims also probably. Regardless, this all resembles Steve's own humble beginnings in motorsports. And good on him for paying it forward. Thanks for watching Up to Speed and all the other shows on Donut Media. We're about to hit 2 million subscribers, so hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, let our boss know and hit that like button. Watch this episode of my son Nolan's show. Watch this episode of my other show. Follow me on Instagram at James Humphrey. Follow Donut at Donut Media. I love you.